So here we are in the control panel and we're going to edit, at least show you the DNS records for dnsthings.com. And in this scenario we have two servers, exact copies um, of the web server on two different IPs. And we want to simply fail over the primary IP, which is the www record shown here. Okay. And then we want to fail that over when that server goes down. We want the DNS to automatically change to the backup server, which is at this IP. So what we need to do is set up a test. And what this test is going to do is let us know when the www server primary IP fails or web server stops responding. It's going to let us know and then change the DNS over. So we go into Netmon and we add a test and here we are adding the failover test. That's what we're going to call this one and we're going to select a protocol and since with this is the www or http we're going to use that as the protocol. This is very similar to a web server to go going to our site. So what I did is I created a test .html page, which is just a very simple small page in the root of the IP address here of our backups of our primary server. And this is called test.html. And then port 80 is the web server port we're running on, and I want to test every one minute, so every minute. And then I want to keep the data for one week. That's the test data. So you can look at statistics for server performance, etc. And now I'm going to go down and enable the ping site one alert profile for both any warnings, burps on the site possibly, and obviously a primary failure I want to know. And I'm going to send that to Netmix, which is another alert profile. Now I'm going to test the testing locations. Now our servers are located primarily in the United States and we're serving a, an audience in North America so we're only going to test server locations in the US. You want to use at least three locations if you're enabling failover and now we simply save the test. So now we go up to the test in the control panel and we go over and we actually click edit on the test which is a little wrench and once the test is saved and, and starts working, well, we can go down and enable failover. So we click the use failover checkbox here to actually enable the function. And now we need to select a domain name that we're using. And in this case, we're going to fail over the dnsthings.com. So we enter that in here in this box. And we want to make sure that there's a checkbox to the right, as you can see there. That's very important. That means that DNS is on our system and it understands and pulls in the zone file. Now we enable DNS failover again and then fail over and fail back. This means it will automatically fail back to the primary IP when that comes back up. Now it loaded the zone file. We're going to scroll down and find the www record. And we want to enable that because that's the, the domain or the uh, record we're going to change. And here's the primary IP automatically in there and now we're typing in the backup IP. It can be any IP address you want, but this is the IP of our backup server. That's it. So now you scroll down and hit save, and DNS failover will automatically be set up on www.dnsthings.com. Thank you.